In this episode, we start to visit coastal locations. From a distance, that looked like sand. It's actually rock. And I feel you've always got to be wary of a man with a jumper over his shoulders. I can't see a sign here. No, I can't. We have a bad day trying to park Harry. What does that mean, salt? Except. We managed to give Harry another scar. And I damaged it. But the night brings us an unexpected van issue that maybe threatens our trip. Welcome to the channel. That's Harry, our camper van, and that's me, Jane, and here's Stu. And we love to share with you our van life adventures. We left you in the last episode having spent a great night in a forest, just outside saint valery Sousson. I hate to say it, but we're looking for signal. <laughs> we didn't have any signal last night, it's just fine. We read the book. We survived. But we just need to find out where we're going next, so... It's such a vast area of forestry that uh, signals really well. It doesn't do us any harm not to have signal once in a while. I wouldn't like it very often. Just found a baguette place. <laughs> so he's a happy boy. He had a baguette this morning that was not his favourite, shall we put it that way. It was a day old. We've discovered you can only eat a baguette on the day and not so good the next day. Today we're going to have a look at the coast. Um, it's about 22, it's only about 25 minutes from where we were. So it's the first time we've been to the coast in France. Uh, yesterday we went to the estuary. Now on this trip we've often seen water towers as we drive along and I've got to say that some are more prettier than others. Today we've come to Bois de Cise and we're a little unsure about the parking restrictions. We're definitely not five metres long. No, no, we're 4.8. 4.972 long, 2.08 width or a bit wide in what they, they like. And we decide to risk it. The houses in the area are all unique and I guess some of them are holiday or weekend properties. We decide, however, just to go down onto the beach. So I reckon that's the risk of disembowelment. Well, they're doing everything possible to put you off, with the risk of death notices, but with loose rocks it pays not to get too close. And as you can see, that crack looks really ominous. The rock formation looks similar to the White Cliffs of Dover and I'm sure possibly there's a geological connection. Oh, this green and black flint type rock. From a distance, that looked like sand. It's actually yeah. rock. Like the flint, you can see the green colour on it. Oh it's yeah. Like it's funny how that's quite Murky, it? oh, it's because it's chalky. It's a, I think yeah. that's a chalky rock, I guess. I can't believe that actually from a distance that it looked like sand. Yeah, that's all like a circle of it. And I think he is as interested as we are. And while sand beaches would be always our first choice, I have to say the rock formations are really interesting. And we actually spent a lot longer here than we thought we would. That was an interesting beach. There was a coastal walk, but we decided not to go on it. There's, there's two houses on the edge there because they tell you to stay away from the cliffs. Um, and one of them particularly is right on the edge. I don't think I'd be sleeping very well at night in that. We were actually right on the edge of the, the width. So we're 2.08, I think. 
So I presume that's in mirror to mirror. So we pulled the mirrors in. <laughs> but, oh, is that why you wanted to do it? I thought it was weird you put the curbside mirror in. I was like, um, but we did fit in the bay. Oh, yeah, it's under five metres. We're under five yeah. metres, doesn't it? It was the slot, we're slightly over on the width officially. Pulling the wing mirrors in made me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Fred. Yeah, you got one yeah. button there. You're going to have a second button there. Nutter Wise overtaking before a speed ramp stew. We'll both be having flashbacks to our argument. Yeah, let's keep it. <laughs> our lunch stop break today was at Le Treport. There's an air on top of the cliffs above, with a vernicular railway connecting to the sea. Oh, it's parking for campermans. Is this one? Places. Okay. 10 euros. 10 euros? It's not paying that. Are we going down to the beach to have a look? We'll go down to the beach area. So. But I've got to say that we are just not feeling it. So we head back down to the seafront. got something in mind. We've, we've got a quaint bar. Fishing port. Fishing port. Is, this is quite big. It's a bit more touristy. Yeah. Do you want to stop or not? Do you want to move on? Do you want to move on? I'm a bit like that with this place. Yeah, I am too. Let's keep on driving. It might, be, it might feel better as we get to this end. This is the port end. We just felt this place wasn't for us. But let us know if we've wrongly viewed this location. Luckily, there is always another destination to be had. So we moved down the coast to St Martin, but today the parking gods are fighting us with no camping car signs in abundance. No. I, I suspect you can't. Go and have a look at the sign, see what you think. And I have to resort to nibbling at Stu's baguette. I'm just trying a place around the corner. I can't see a sign here. No, I can't. What does that mean, salt? Except. For bonus, basically. Stu needs his baguette. I could say, really? You can just put some in. Lead a hammer. Lead a hammer. There you go. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, stop it. Whack that in. Double cheese, baguette. Share and share with me. <laughs> we head back to the seafront where I managed to scratch Harry's door. Have I damaged it? The chip, yeah. That's all right. Oh, okay, you help me out. That's fine. Well, to be fair, there isn't a lot of bloody room here. I wouldn't have got out. I'm not surprised I knocked it. What we need right now is a place just to lose ourselves and St Martin Beach ticks that box. With the simple, soothing sounds of the waves and the pebbles. So 
if you're enjoying our videos, pause right now and click that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment as it really helps promote the channel. He really made us laugh as he posed for the picture. Maybe he was a catalogue model in his past life. I hate to admit it, but we were both willing for a large way to hit him to make our video collection. And I feel you've always got to be wary of a man with a jumper over his shoulders. And so it's time for us to hunt out a park up and after a bit of a drive in the afternoon sun, we end up just outside the town of Aquila Batale. This area was the scene of a battle between the French royal forces of King Henry IV and troops of what was called the Catholic League. There's a lot of people turned up all dressed up and we just wonder if there's some sort of memorial. They're quite noisy and they're making their way up. Oh, hello. Come on, play nicely, guys. God, they've moved up here so quick. Good God, they're like hoovers. I can't get over how quickly they have made their way from right up there in minutes. They've slowed down a bit now. It got caught in the door, so it's not looking very happy. It's had a pruning, pruning in the door. It's had a bit of a, a trauma. It's choosing in, the, in his man cave at the end of the van. <laughs> so yes, we believe that there's a storm coming. I think I think it'll clear overnight, but it's going to be about forty-five to fifty miles an hour according to the weather up tonight, going at four o'clock. So that was an interesting night, it was a bit of storm in night last night. The, uh, I think the storms in England and the UK were certainly uh, hitting and then we, I think we caught the side of it. Stu woke up at four to go to the toilet. Yeah, and I could feel that the uh, bottom of the uh, bed was a bit uh, damp and I noticed just a, it was only slight dampness. It was a bit more last night, I have to say. So it was over the sheet and that. And um, there was a drip coming from the uh, skylight uh, so it was coming through uh, from around the skylight and that. Um, so I took the, uh, there's a, like a shroud where the um, the blinds connect you, you unscrew that. But I have to say this took some time to do in the early hours after the storm had passed. A big guard in there. The problem was the cover had four packing lugs over the screw heads to hide them and it took me ages to get this lug out. I ended up destroying the lugs in the end. As ever, I start to plan on what I could do as a temporary repair by putting sealant around the outside maybe, or maybe some tape. I could see where the, the drips were, so there were some screws there, and I just tightened those up so that put, pulls down on me, which I presume is like a rubber uh, flange and that. Fortunately, tightening the screws had stopped further leaks as it was obviously pulling down the outer skylight. And that seemed to resolve it, so I guess over five years with all the all up and down, maybe that's got loose slightly. So I gave everything a good drying out and then I popped the cover back on. To be honest, we would have had to return home if I hadn't have got this temporary fix in place. In the morning, having exchanged communication with auto campers, we'd booked Harry in for the repair work when we returned back to England. I, I contacted uh, auto campers overnight and they mailed me great service. Uh, they mailed me straight away this morning, you know, because I was going to put some extra sicker flex onto it. And they said, no, don't do that, whatever you do. So they give me some guidance on what to do. So that's, that's all you can ask for, really. That's brilliant. You know, five years on, I'm still getting that type of service. Well, we'll leave it there for now. But our day continues to have drama where we visit the local town where we instigate an animal rescue. Oh dear. Oh, oh right, I've got to go and do some better. And I take a fall. Stupid idiot, you're going to be filthy. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it.